These are the headlines we're following at this hour. President Yoon Suk Yeol met Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in Riyadh, where they agreed to diversify bilateral ties beyond oil. With 15 billion U.S. dollars worth of projects ranging from hydrogen to electric vehicles, the two leaders also highlighted the worsening humanitarian crisis from the Israel-Hamas war, with Yoon offering humanitarian support. More trucks carrying aid entered the blockaded Gaza, and ahead of the looming invasion of Gaza by Israel, artillery exchanges on the Israel-Lebanon border are raising concerns over a wider regional conflict with the potential engagement of Hezbollah. South Korean authorities scrambled to contain the spread of lumpy skin disease in cattle by injecting some $7.5 million into disinfection efforts, as more than 10 cases are found nationwide. Good afternoon. We start in Riyadh, where President Yoon suk yeol held summit talks with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The two leaders agreed to level up their cooperation from oil-based to future-oriented ties with some $15 billion worth of deals to be signed. They also highlight the worsening humanitarian crisis from the Israel-Hamas war with Yoon offering humanitarian support. Our presidential office correspondent Oh Soo-young starts us off. South Korea and Saudi Arabia agreed to ramp up their bilateral cooperation to a future-oriented strategic partnership in new industries, with over 15 billion U.S. dollars worth of deals to be inked as they prepare for a post-oil economy. President Yoon suk yeol and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman held a summit in Riyadh Sunday, as Yoon becomes the first South Korean leader to make a state visit to Saudi Arabia. Their talks also fall upon the 50th anniversary of South Korean firms entering the kingdom's construction sector. Until now, the bilateral relationship focused largely on one commodity, oil, and construction projects in Saudi Arabia dating back to the 1970s. But now, with the Saudi Vision 2030 looking to diversify away from oil and spark economic and social innovation, the two countries are expanding their cooperation into new promising areas. As investments in nuclear power plants, green energy, digital technologies and AI expand globally, our partnership with the Middle East region is moving to a stage that encompasses future industries such as hydrogen, IT, automobiles and renewable energy. Yun said the two countries make optimal partners in growing their post-oil economies, reiterating the need for greater collaboration. He also asked Bin Salman to play a leading role in stabilizing global oil prices amid market volatility. The Crown Prince welcomed the President's state visit and pledged to communicate more frequently with Yoon, saying Korea is a key partner in this Vision 2030. Agreeing to strengthen cooperation in the defense sector, the two leaders also saw eye to eye on the potential for partnership in fields such as tourism, smart farms, statistics, cybersecurity, and food and drug regulations. They also called for joint efforts to produce solid outcomes before holding a signing ceremony for key memorandums of understanding. These include a visa exemption scheme for diplomats and state officials, establishing a strategic partnership committee and agreements to cooperate on hydrogen production and utilisation, government statistics and regulatory procedures on food and medical products. The two leaders also welcomed the more than 50 business MOUs to be signed during Yoon's official visit, worth some $15.6 billion of investment, on top of the $29 billion Riyadh pledged to inject into South Korea last year. Also during their talks, Yoon and Bin Salman discussed their response to the Israel-Hamas conflict, with the South Korean leader offering necessary support including humanitarian assistance. Going forward, Yoon's office says, with South Korea's developmental experience and technological prowess, and Saudi's abundant resources and growth potential, the two countries can strike up synergy as they shift towards a sustainable future and look to overcome complex geopolitical challenges. Oh Soo-young, Airang News, Riyadh. And part of the $15 billion of projects are dozens of business deals that were signed during an investment forum focused on high-tech and future industry. And that includes Hyundai Motors building an EV plant in Saudi Arabia. Kim do has the details. As South Korea and Saudi Arabia deepen economic cooperation with multi-billion dollar projects between the two countries, an investment forum was held in light of President Yoon Suk-yeol's visit to Riyadh. 
President Yoon stepping up in front of around 300 business leaders and government officials from both sides, emphasized the synergy effect between the two countries. According to the top office, 46 MOUs and deals have been signed from this event, and around 30 were deals in high-tech industries and new businesses. This includes Hyundai Motors building an EV plant in Saudi Arabia, as well as deals related to hydrogen energy production as Saudi Arabia prepares itself for the post-oil economy. 이제 양국 간 협력 관계도 원유 건설 협력을 넘어 제조업, 스마트 인프라, 청정 에너지 등 비전 2030 관련된 전 분야로 파트너십을 확장해야 합니다. South Korea's food and snack producer Nongshim signed deals with Saudi greenhouses to develop smart farms in the country. Punglim Pharmatech, a South Korean medical device manufacturer, agreed to create a Saudi plant. And there were deals in other new types of businesses such as robotics and aesthetics. For conventional areas such as infrastructure and energy, Korea National Oil Corporation and Saudi Arabia's state-run energy company Aramco signed a contract to cooperate in petroleum storage, as well as MOUs for cooperation in Saudi's new smart city construction projects. 양국 경제인 여러분, 이제 사우디는 아시아와 유럽, 아프리카를 연결하는 명실상부한 글로벌 허브 국가로 도약하고 있습니다. 대한민국과 사우디가 함께 써 내려갈 새로운 역사의 주인공은 바로 이 자리에 계신 경제인 여러분들입니다. In terms of Saudi's creation of new cities, President Yoon and the First Lady Kim Gani visited the historical Saudi Arabian town of Daria near Riyadh soon after landing on Saturday. There, President Yoon was asked by Saudi officials to help South Korea participate in a $20 billion project to develop this region. Kim Do-yeon, Arirang News. Now on to the latest on the Israel-Hamas war. More trucks carrying aid entered the blockaded Gaza. And ahead of the looming invasion of Gaza by Israel, artillery exchanges on the Israel-Lebanon border are raising concerns over a wider conflict with the potential engagement of Hezbollah, prompting Israeli Prime Minister's warning toward the militant group. Lee sing has more. A day after 20 trucks carried medical aid, food, and water into Gaza on Saturday, another 17 trucks moved through the Rafah crossing with more humanitarian aid. For the second straight day, aid was allowed into the Palestinian enclave during a short window as Israel continued preparations for a ground offensive. Despite the much-needed aid flowing into Gaza over the weekend, the United Nations says about 100 trucks per day are required to meet the needs of Gazans. Also, while the trucks carried food, water and medical supplies, the shipments did not include much-needed fuel. Meanwhile, with tensions rising on the Israel-Lebanon border, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned Hezbollah that it will be making the biggest mistake of its life if it takes part in the armed conflict. His comments came as he visited troops near Israel's northern border with Lebanon, where increased artillery exchanges have been seen, sparking fears of a new front opening. Operations in the region also resulted in shell fragments from an Israeli tank hitting the Egyptian border on Sunday, leaving at least seven people injured, including several Egyptian border guards. The Israeli military said the incident is being investigated and expressed sorrow, adding that it was accidental. Also on Sunday, Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant said the ongoing conflict with Hamas could take months, but stressed that it would be the last against a militant group. Israel says that its air raids have been targeting Hamas commanders and infrastructure, but Gaza's health ministry said Sunday that more than 4,600 Palestinians have been killed, including 1,873 children. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. 
As the Israel-Hamas war enters its third week, the leaders of the U.S. and other Western countries are ramping up diplomatic efforts to prevent a wider regional conflict while pledging humanitarian support for civilians. Meanwhile, Arab nations are calling on Israel to immediately stop its offensive. Our Choi soo reports. U.S. President Joe Biden, in a virtual meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Sunday, welcomed the entry of the first aid convoys into the Gaza Strip. The White House said both leaders affirmed their commitment to ongoing humanitarian aid for Gaza and greeted the release of two American hostages by Hamas. It also called for the immediate release of all remaining hostages. President Biden also held a meeting with leaders from Canada, France, Germany, Italy and the United Kingdom to discuss the Israel and Hamas conflict, which has the potential to escalate to other parts of the Middle East, with clashes already happening on the Israel and Lebanon border. The White House stated that President Biden discussed his recent visit to Israel and efforts to ensure food, medicine and other humanitarian support for Gaza. Moreover, Western leaders pledged to work together closely for lasting peace in the Middle East and to provide support to their citizens in the region, particularly those who wish to leave Gaza. Meanwhile, on Saturday, there was a peace conference in Cairo aimed at stopping the conflict. Many leaders and foreign ministers from the Middle East, Africa and Europe came to the Cairo summit of peace without Israel or the United States. While Arab and Muslim states ask for immediate end to Israel's military offensive, Western countries mostly voiced for modest solutions like humanitarian aid for civilians. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas expressed his views during his opening speech at the summit. Ladies and gentlemen, we will not leave. We will not leave. We will not leave. And we will remain on our land. The meeting finished with leaders and foreign ministers failing to reach a joint statement, despite the conflict having lasted for two weeks, resulting in thousands of deaths and pushing Gaza into a humanitarian crisis. Choi soo Arirang News. South Korea's ruling People Power Party and the government are pushing for new measures to improve people's livelihoods, focused on stabilizing prices of everyday items and energy products. At a meeting on Sunday, they agreed that government supplies of 2,900 tons of cabbage be released ahead of the upcoming kimchi making season. There will also be nationwide discounts on certain food products. In addition to extending fuel tax cuts through the year end, they will actively monitor government reserves of petroleum to take responsive measures when necessary. South Korean authorities are scrambling to contain the spread of lumpy skin disease in cattle by injecting some $7.5 million into disinfection efforts. This as 11 cases are found nationwide. Our uni has the details. South Korea's first ever case of lumpy skin disease was discovered last week when four cows were found to have had symptoms at a farm in Seosan, Chungcheongnam-do province. Since then, the number of cases has risen to 11 as of Monday morning, with reports of more suspected cases across the country. In response, the Ministry of the Interior and Safety announced on Sunday that special subsidies worth over 10 billion Korean won, or almost 7.5 million U.S. dollars, will be provided to halt the spread of the disease. Subsidies will be allocated to support disease prevention activities by local governments, including the operation of base disinfection facilities. The government has raised the crisis alert level to serious, the highest level in its four-tier system. And starting Monday, the Ministry of the Interior and Safety is conducting joint inspections with the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs in five West Coast regions. Cattle farms in Gyeonggi-do, Chungcheongnam-do, Jeollabuk-do, Jeollanam-do provinces and Incheon will be inspected as part of a disease prevention process. Lumpy skin disease is a viral disease in cattle transmitted by blood-feeding insects, with symptoms including blisters and lower milk production. The disease does not pose a threat to humans. However, authorities say they will call infected cattle to prevent any possibility of them entering the food system. Some 50,000 cows will also be vaccinated. After its discovery in Zambia in 1929, lumpy skin disease was considered an endemic disease in Africa for several decades. However, after 2010, 
it began to spread to European and Asian countries. Authorities say that although there might be a temporary price increase for Korean hanu beef, the overall impact on supply and price, including milk prices, is expected to be limited. Ian Hee, Arirang News. South Korea's exports during the first 20 days of October were up nearly 5 percent compared to the previous year, raising expectations of a rebound this month. Data from the Korea Customs Service on Monday shows that the value of exports rose 4.6 percent on year to 33.8 billion U.S. dollars. Officials say this was partly due to the jump in outbound shipments to the United States and Japan. The average export value per working day also surged 8.6 percent from the previous year, as the first 20 days of October had half a working day less than the previous year. This raises expectations that the 12 consecutive month of on-year decline in exports could come to an end in October. Two of South Korea's leading electric vehicle and battery manufacturers have signed a supply chain deal for the first time. On Monday, battery maker Samsung SDI released a statement saying that it plans to supply electric vehicle company Hyundai Motor with electric vehicle batteries for seven years, starting in 2026. Samsung SDI will supply batteries made in its plant in Hungary to Hyundai Motor's EV sites in Europe. The agreement is in addition to Samsung SDI's many partnerships with motor companies following deals drawn up with General Motors and BMW earlier this year. New data on South Korea's female employment rate has revealed that despite improvement, the country's gender gap is still eighth largest among 38 OECD member countries. According to an OECD report on Monday, South Korea's employment rate in the second quarter of 2023 was 76.92% for men and 61.36% for women, a gap of more than 15 percentage points. It is also larger than OECD average of 30 13.85 percentage points. South Korea's female employment rate has increased significantly over the past 10 years, but is still low compared to other countries. Turkey had the lowest female employment at 35.34 percent. Let's take a look at what's going on in the world now. The result of the Argentina general election indicates a presidential runoff between Sergio Massa and Javier Millet. With 86% of the votes counted, the centrist economy minister Sergio Massa holds a lead in votes over libertarian economist Javier Millet by 36% to 30%. This means the second round face-off election will take place on November 19th between the two leading candidates. Given the current economic situation, where inflation is running at an annual rate of 138 percent, the highest in three decades, Argentinians are seeking a candidate who can revive their economy. Millet, the surprise winner of August primaries, proposes radical changes such as dollarization of the economy and ending commercial trade with China. Current finance minister Massa still holds ground with his popular tax cuts while struggling to turn around the dire economic conditions. In Asia, ships from China and the Philippines collided on Sunday in the disputed South China Sea. In two separate incidents, Chinese Coast Guard ships collided with a Philippine military supply boat and a Philippine Coast Guard escort boat. Philippine authorities stated that both of the incidents took place near 2nd Thomas Shoal, where a Philippine Marine outpost is located. This is an area of the South China Sea that China is trying to claim. The 2016 arbitration ruling under the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea deemed China's claims illegitimate. Near collisions have been commonplace in the region, however this was the first time Philippine officials have publicly reported their ships being hit by China's ships. In the U.S. city of Detroit, the head of a synagogue has been found dead in a local park. President of the board at the Isaac Agree downtown synagogue, Samantha Wall, is suspected to have been fatally stabbed at her home. Detroit police stated that there is so far no evidence suggesting anti-Semitic motives and that many of its resources have been mobilized for further investigation. Many describe Samantha Wall as a much-loved figure in the local community. Over in the U.S., pop star Taylor Swift's era's tour concert film continues to beat domestic box office records, adding another $31 million in ticket sales in its second weekend in theaters. 
In total, the concert film is estimated to have secured almost $130 million in the 10 days since it was released in more than 3,850 theatres across the country. And while the film's distributor is set to release the international figures on Monday, according to reports, if the streak continues, it may top Michael Jackson's This Is It concert film as the highest grossing global concert movie of all time. Si Young Kim, Arirang News. Good afternoon. After experiencing an unseasonably chill in the air over the weekend, temperatures have returned to normal across Korea. It was a much warmer start to the day than Sunday, and highs finally reached the 20s this afternoon. Southern provinces remain mostly sunny all day, while there is a slim chance that the west of central regions could see spotty rain passing by. Meanwhile, part of Gangwon-do province is under a dry weather advisory today. Afternoon highs in most parts are similar to or slightly higher than seasonal norms. Seoul and Gwangju topping out at 21 degrees Celsius, Gyeongju at 23 degrees. It's nearly perfect weather to explore the enchanting autumn colors today. Then there will be more on and off rain in the west of central regions through Wednesday dawn. While a major cold snap may not be in the cards this week, Please prepare for a roller coaster ride of temperatures and take well care of yourself. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. Over the weekend, Hamas freed two American hostages in its first such release. And playing a vital role was Qatar, a U.S. ally in the Middle East and where several Hamas leaders live. Reports say the U.S. immediately reached out to the Gulf nation, and Qatar held many days of talks. Hopes are high on more outcomes by Qatar, perhaps replacing the traditional mediator Egypt, especially with the peace summit in Cairo ending without a breakthrough. This comes as Qatar also helped secure the return of four Ukrainian children from Russia. Around 200 captives are still held by Hamas, with countries pressing Israel to delay a ground invasion of Gaza to buy time for secret talks through Qatar. The delay, however, will be exactly what Hamas intends to achieve through hostages. That is all for today. Thanks for watching.